This is my iPhone 15 Pro Max and I've been using it over the past two weeks and recently really thinking about which of the top new features have actually mattered to me personally in the real world. Which ones have I actually used and which ones have I not? Like actually the action button, which turns out I haven't really been using it that much, but that's just me. So in this video, I'm gonna focus on the top five new features that I've actually been really using and loving. And it includes one of them that Apple didn't even really focus on during their announcement. So let's get into features number one, which is actually the 5X Tetra Prism camera. I've just realized that I have literally been obsessed with this new 5X camera, particularly with portrait shots. They just look absolutely insane, very natural, and unlike any other portraits I've seen from any other smartphone. These actually look like they came out of a pro DSLR camera. And I love the way that the new Smart HDR5 works together with the 5X lens to make the portraits look very good and natural. We just got back from this awesome weekend getaway with our friends at this really cool castle Airbnb, and I noticed myself taking so many 5X portraits, specifically like this one with the kind of sunshine from the window, just making this awesome, awesome effect, just looks incredible and natural. We even had this one that we took on the top of the mountain, which was an insanely hard situation because to my eyes, all of the faces were black because it was just so bright, but the Smart HDR5 kind of brought it up to make it still look good and noticeable. Now, it's not the best shot, but for this situation, it was absolutely great. So this new 5X camera is giving us portraits that look like nothing else that we've seen before, look like a pro camera and I think I'm actually gonna grab my a7r4a pro camera which is very very expensive and do a shootout between that and this at 120 millimeter focal length which is 5x we'll see how it goes but out of all the new features this 5x camera is the one that I've actually used and loved the most. Now getting into new feature number two that I've actually been loving, we have USB type C. But before I get into that, I've gotta show you something that's been life changing for me now that summer is coming to a close. This is the brand new Soho sneaker from our partner Vessi, which is 100% waterproof using their unique Dymatex material, being their first sneaker with a synthetic leather exterior that's incredibly stylish and comfortable. And the other day, it literally saved my socks from getting wet when we had to go out and film B-roll for our iPhone 15 Pro review in the rain with a bunch of puddles everywhere. And thankfully, I didn't forget my matching Vessi overcast jacket, which is also 100% waterproof, repelling water like it's nothing, while being incredibly comfortable with a relaxed fit design, soft fleece lining, and even zipper pockets to keep your things secure and dry. Together, they're the perfect match for wet weather and, of course, style. They come in a variety of trendy colors, and you can order them today by using the link below to get 15% off your order with the code MAXTECH at checkout. This is working so much better than I ever imagined it would when Apple announced it. Basically, everything supports it. All of my cables now work to charge the iPhone and a bunch of other accessories that I have in my house. I actually used the same cable to charge my iPhone, and then I instantly switched it to charge my portable speaker, which was so nice nice and convenient. I have this awesome charge key accessory from Nomad, which is basically a short kind of magnetic accessory that's actually a small little USB-C to C cable. And now I have this on me at all times with my keys whenever I need it, which is really, really cool. And I've actually already used it. So this has been very nice to have. To my surprise, it even puts out a good amount of power, I believe 4.5 watts, so I can actually power things like this phone cooler 
from Razer that I used a bunch of times for testing to try to test out the overheating, see if I can stop the basic thermal throttling or heat soaking of the iPhone chassis. So it's just so cool the things that you can plug in. I even use USB-C to transfer a ton of video clips that I recorded on my iPhone 15 Pro Max for a dedicated sponsored review and all of the clips transferred in seconds. It was crazy. It was just about the time that it used to take to transfer the same amount of photos, but they're actually nice cinematic videos. We tested so many USB-C hubs, devices, and everything works. Multiple SD cards. We even saw people connecting keyboards and playing certain games with WASD on the keyboard. I also used an adapter to connect my projector with 4K 60 FPS quality, which is only possible now thanks to USB-C, giving me an awesome gaming experience, and I can't wait to play those AAA ported games. And speaking of gaming, we have the A17 Pro chip, which is feature number three. Now, honestly, when the initial reviews and reports came out with the chip just taking a ton of power with issues with all of the overheating that was happening, I was convinced that this chip was a major disappointing flop. However, after Apple's overheating update, it's actually been performing so well for so many other people, including myself. Apple actually fixed it. On top of that, I've also noticed the battery life has gotten so much better my second week of owning the 15 Pro Max compared to the first, and especially after the overheating update, the battery life is finally really, really good. I actually made a video that talked about how to get rid of overheating during gaming using the Razer phone cooler, but to my surprise, my iPhone 15 Pro Max was killing it with consistent FPS and the display actually didn't dim down at all after 30 minutes of playing Genshin Impact at 100% display brightness. And yes, Metal FX upscaling was off. I tested other games like COD Mobile and Pascal's Wager as well, no dimming at all. Now one reason for that could be because we have another GPU core, now up to six of them. So basically the graphics load is split up between all of them, which now allows the overall clock speed to run slower on each core, which leads to a lot less heat during gaming. So overall, I'm very surprised and impressed by the A17 Pro chip, and I really wanna play those AAA games. And now for number four, we have the 24 megapixel default camera mode along with all the other software optimizations that came with that. I'm absolutely loving the new 24 megapixel default output because for the first time in so many years, we finally got an upgrade from the standard 12 megapixels that Apple and so many other brands have stuck to for so long. The difference is actually noticeable, especially when you zoom in just a little bit and compare it to regular 12 megapixel mode from the previous iPhone 14 Pro and other smartphone brands like the S23 Ultra. And I absolutely love the fact that the One X camera portraits are also now taken at 24 megapixels. My wife has been taking One X portraits on her 15 Pro, especially at camp and of her kids, and the difference has been noticeable with overall sharper and more detailed looking photos. They just look great. This basically sets Apple apart from the rest of the smartphone world, especially since Apple is allowing full software functionality and support at 24 megapixels, which some people might not realize is actually a huge deal because it takes a lot more processing power to be able to take these photos compared to 12 megapixels. Even like enabling the live photos and 24 megapixel output at the same time, that is really tough on the processing and Apple makes it work flawlessly. And I know for sure the rest of the industry is gonna follow in Apple's foot steps with setting 24 megapixels as the new default, which shows just how big of a deal this is. And for feature number five, we have something that Apple didn't really talk about much at all. 
I've been experiencing noticeably better cellular service with the 15 Pro Max. And on top of that, less overheating while using 5G or location services. It's just more efficient as well. Now this one is a bit of a phantom feature because Apple didn't really focus on it, but the new 15s now come with the Snapdragon X70 modem, which is faster and more efficient, leading to less heat. Now when we just got the phone and we tested it in our office, we noticed a huge difference in the cellular speeds, especially here in our concrete office building. That actually matters a lot because when it comes to cellular issues, the main problems that come in are in certain areas or buildings where you just wouldn't get a good signal or maybe no signal at all. For example, at our campgrounds that we camp at during the summer, we used to have a bunch of connectivity issues with T-Mobile having really slow service that was just barely good enough to load emails or some Twitter posts. But my wife was there recently with her new 15 Pro and she said it's been getting noticeably better. She even said that with her previous 14 Pro, she wouldn't even be able to initiate a phone call at all with the call instantly ending as soon as she hit the call button with no ringing or anything like that. But with the new 15 Pro, it actually initiates, it calls, it rings, she can get on a call with somebody using LTE. Now that right there is progress and that's a massive deal when it comes to the real world use of your phone. So bravo Qualcomm for this great moto. So there you guys go, those were my top five features that I've loved and used the most over the past couple of weeks on my 15 Pro Max. Let me know your favorite down below, subscribe above, definitely check out one of those two videos right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.